who's been your toughest customer to, to uh, satisfy? Well, I don't want to name any names, but... Um, I thought you might not. <laughs> <laughs> they all have their nuances. Trey Nemeth, Senior Vice President, Small Cell Research and Development, and General Manager, RACAP. Welcome. Thank you very much, Don. RACAP is making some news with its AT&T Discovery District project. Tell me about that. Yes, this is a very uh, interesting and challenging project that we uh, worked on and completed uh, over the course of the past uh, year. And uh, there's really kind of two parts of it. Uh, One is a a very challenging uh, building concealment application um, that's in the Discovery District on uh, headquarters of a major uh, U.S. operator. And it has a particularly challenging um, appearance. It has kind of a um, a granite uh, type finish on the building. And so we had to uh, develop concealment boxes that go on the building that uh, not only are uh, capable of, uh, of handling and, and allowing the permission of uh, or transmission of the 5G millimeter wave signal through using our InvisiWave technology, but we also had to manufacture the boxes in a way that precisely matched the appearance of the existing building, which is a challenge. So uh, we successfully uh, went through this uh, process. We're very happy with the finished result. And um, we also have other projects that are in the Discovery District, which is a you know, very charming uh, and uh, uh, section of downtown Dallas. And we built several poles there as well. And the poles were definitely very unique as well. They had a, a pretty uh, uh, interesting and uh a unique uh, symbol on them, which is the Pegasus symbol, which is represents uh, mm-hmm. mobile um, oil and gas, which was headquartered there for years. And um, the uh, the finished result is, is kind of an artistic looking pole that does a great job of fitting in with uh, the downtown area. I'm looking at some some photographs of, of the project. I see what you mean about the matching of the sides of the building with, uh, with the, uh, the building in the AT&T district. You can hardly tell the difference between the stone and the uh, and the disguise. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think it looks great. Uh, you know, this is something that uh, we've uh, been doing for decades, uh, as far as uh, matching existing architectural appearances for the purposes of hiding antennas. And you know, this is just an extension of that. As the technology has increased, we've uh, improved. We've uh, we've come up with uh, with different ways to. Uh, to very closely match this. And we've also come up with new materials and design methods to be able to conceal uh, the new uh, technologies like 5G millimeter wave, which is a a very challenging. We developed our InvisiWave material uh, over the course of uh, about a year and a half of development and working directly with the carriers to uh, rigorously test and and get their approval on the material ultimately. And uh, now we, we use it for a wide variety of uh, applications uh, all over the country, including boxes like the ones on the building that you're looking at. Who's been your toughest customer to to, uh, satisfy? I don't want to name any names, but... um, I thought you might not. (laughs) (laughs) They they all have their nuances, and and, and they all are very particular about network performance, obviously. And uh, Without naming names, what what was a difficult problem that you, you had to overcome? Well, the material uh, had to be tested for obviously durability, um, for um, for RF performance is, is probably the biggest one. So we're we're looking at uh, what kind of impact does the material have on the actual power of the signal that's being radiated through? You know, what what type of dB loss are we seeing? Um, but more importantly, and, and perhaps more challenging to uh, test and quantify, is what impact does it have on the pattern? Uh, as well. And so mm-hmm. these are all, uh, these are uh, among, uh, you know, several different mm-hmm. tests that we had to do to, to gain this, to gain these approvals and start using this material. And, and we've successfully deployed uh, it on, um, you know, many, many sites uh, over the course of the past uh, uh, roughly two years since we got it approved. How complicated is the testing? What level of expertise does RACAP have to bring to this? Well, we, uh, you know, I like to think that we have an extremely high level of expertise in this. And, uh, you know, there's no playbook that's written for this. So this, you know, these types of testing programs require negotiations with the carriers to 
find out what's going to satisfy their uh, RF engineering departments. And um, but in addition to that, we need to make sure first of all that it's, it's a material that we feel comfortable with. You know, because you can you can put uh, a lot of different materials in front of an antenna or in front of a radio and have uh, you know reasonable performance from an RF perspective. But the question is, does the material perform for the purpose that it's intended? Can you manufacture it? Can you uh, manufacture it into the different shapes that are required? Does it have the structural capacity and these types of yes. things? So, it's, so we have to uh, you know, go through a lot of materials that don't pass those initial tests <laughs> before we arrive at maybe a handful that, that, we, that we like. And then we proceed with the, uh, you know, the more stringent uh, RF testing and the other tests that are involved. Speaking specifically to this uh, AT&T Discovery District project, um, how long did it take start to finish? So what we typically uh, estimate for a project like this is uh, it can be as fast as uh, somewhere in the six to eight week range. Um, other times it takes longer than that. And, and the reason that it takes longer is nothing having to do with the manufacturing or engineering process or the development of the solution, which we can do very quickly. It has more to do with getting approvals. And so, you know, yes. this project fell into that category. I don't know the exact amount of time in, uh, in months, but it did take a long period of time uh, from kind of initial inception to generation of concept drawings and photo simulations and, and all of the things that are required to, to get approvals from all the powers that be, which are, you know, substantial. You've got the the, the uh, representatives from the, the carrier, you've got representatives from the building owner or the landlord, and then of course the city or municipality in order to get permitting. So those things sometimes take uh, months or years, um, but if all of those things are in line uh, for us to do our job effectively uh, is just a, a matter of, of a few weeks typically. How many, how many people at uh, RACAP would you say devoted their time and talent uh, to the project. And how big was the celebration party? Yeah, this is uh, one of, uh, of hundreds of projects that are going on simultaneously. Um, so, but, mm -hmm. but the, these types of projects are, are, are definitely, um, uh, you know, we consider a feather in our cap, especially when we're doing work that's, that's on the building that belongs to one of the wireless operators. And um, we have, uh, you know, a lot of different um, people that have to touch this in you know, different segments of our business that have to touch and be involved with a project like this, you know, starting with our sales department and estimating, uh, you know, trying to figure out how it is that we're going to build it and really understanding what the customer's needs are. Uh, and then, you know, it kind of works its way through our engineering department and, uh, you know, fabrication drawing process. And then uh, from a manufacturing and production standpoint, we have, you know, uh, everyone from, from steel workers, you know, uh, to, uh, you know, uh, technicians who are manufacturing the composite parts, like the boxes themselves, and then our uh, our artist technology team, who's applying the finished uh, surface appearance to the boxes themselves. So it's a uh, it's it's a substantial number of people. Uh, by the time we get it from start to finish, where are you seeking new business for this uh, this product and and service? Who are not your customers now? Who you'd like to attract? Well. You know, we don't uh, we don't do a lot of work directly with uh, uh, landlords and building owners. It's uh, something that uh, we do occasionally uh, with, mm -hmm. with large commercial operators. But you know, ultimately, um, when we have done work with those types of entities, it's been it's been a good situation because we're able to understand directly what their needs are. Um, but then bridging the gap uh, with uh, you know putting a viable antenna concealment on a building, for example and attracting a tenant like uh, like one of the wireless operators is, is a different story. So the vast majority of the opportunities come directly through the wireless operators when they get to the point that they've negotiated at least uh, on, on, on paper what this should look like, you know, what, yes. what in general it should look like, or at least uh, they've, they've come up with a, with a verbal agreement on what they want it to look like. And then they turn to us to uh, kind of turn that into reality and, and, and help support them with their negotiations through, as I mentioned before, you know, the generation of concept drawings and photo yes. simulations and things like that to help support the process through. How, how would someone approach RACAP? Who should they get in touch with to take advantage of this? Well, let's start with our website. Um, it's uh, www.raycap.com. And uh, on there, there's uh, 
uh, link where you can see all of our sales representatives uh, across the country, uh, as well as a way to contact us directly. Um, we have a pretty effective sales force out there. So there, there are uh, probably uh, a lot of folks that would be watching this that already know how to reach us. But um, if you have any question at all, uh, I think that's the, the best place to go for the, for the latest and greatest uh, contact information. Is there anything you wish I would have asked you about this that I didn't think to ask? Uh, you know, we focused a lot on the, uh, on the, the rooftop screen wall application, um, but the, uh, the pole applications as well that are, that are in, that, uh, in that area are, are definitely um, uh, interesting and have some, some really neat nuances. So um, I invite anyone who's down in the Dallas area to go down and check them out, look for those Pegasus logos, and, uh, and you'll be able to see the, the poles that we're, that we're referencing. Um, the uh, other thing, uh, just to uh, you know, talk about the uh, um, you know upcoming uh, C band installations as well. Yes. Um, you know, this is a, obviously a very hot topic, and um, it's important to note that the materials that we use for these rooftop and pole concealment uh, applications are approved for uh, for C band deployments as well. So there is kind of a uh, you know, f forward thinking in that way, and, and they're future proof in a way uh, to be able to to accept uh, uh, these new technologies as they come out. The FCC just released something like five thousand C band licenses. Are you expecting a, the floodgates to open? We're starting to see um, a lot of action already, and uh, yes, it's uh, it's definitely the. Uh, uh, the buzz. I think there, there'll be a lot of uh, a lot of deployment and a lot of reliance on on the C band frequencies uh, to support the uh, you know larger propagation of five uh, G technology. Trey Nemeth, Senior Vice President, Small Cell Research and Development, and General Manager Raycap. Thank you for your time. Absolutely, Don. It's a pleasure. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.